Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining our webinar this morning uh, for Sage Classic, Sage Premier, and Sage Trinity VIP. We're going to discuss some information and a few, a few details regarding the backup and restore process in the parallel applications. And we would like to thank you for being here with us. I know that backups uh, of backup backups of data sometimes can cause a lot of frustrations. Restoring data can cause frustrations. We're going to give you the background about what we the, the processes in the system and just a few things to look out for. The session will not be as technical as some people might expect, as we don't want to go into much detail to bore some people with the nitty gritties. Um, if they ask this type of questions, um, we will be able to directly answer you on them if we get the, the information. But it's basically, we're just going to discuss the process and um, just make you aware of the system and the processes within the within the application. Uh, just uh, for your information, this, this uh, session will be recorded and will be available later on our YouTube channel. You will be receiving a link with the information as well uh, after the session. So you will be able to refer back to the information after we completed the session. My name is Francois Brandt. I work in the customer support division uh, for Sage uh, with, uh, with the product Sage VIP, uh, which includes Sage Classic and Sage Premier, uh, Sage Toronto C VIP, and Sage Business Cloud Power Professional. And one of the panelists is Sean Stevens from our technical team as well, assisting us with any specific inquiries. Um, basically, on the agenda today, we're just going to talk about, about the terminology of backups and restores. We're going to look at the backup backup of data, restore of data, some responsibilities and recommendations from Sage when making backups and restoring data, and just a little bit of troubleshooting that we would like to discuss there as well. So what does it mean to create a backup? Now, a backup is basically a process where you're making a copy of the original information to be used in an event that the original copy or the system is lost or damaged. Um, Making backups of files on a backup media, which could be secondary storage, including hard drives and cloud storage drives, is an important part of your protecting of data process and ensure the integrity of your files. Backups does help you to ensure that regardless of your current uh, security strategy, you have secure and clean data to get your payroll up and running in the case of a data loss, a hack, of, a hack attack, or even if there's a natural disaster. Too many times we've seen that uh, that an event happens, theft, um, fires, anything can happen where you, it, it is unfortunately the day before payday. You have to make sure that the, the pace still go out. And if you don't have anything in place to be in a, to recover your payroll in the shortest amount of time, it will result in difficult process, in quite difficult conversations and processes with your staff and with, with management to get everything up and running. So. The backup process is an integral part of your security process, and with your IT should always have a strategy to ensure that if something happens, that you can recover as soon as possible. Now, what does the restore of data mean? Basically, the restore of data is the process of copying the backup data from the secondary storage and restoring it to the original location or to a new location. The restore is performed to return data that has been lost, stolen, damaged to the original condition or to move the data to a new location to be able to view the program snapshot, as we would call it, of when the backup was made. The backup is a point in time when, when something happens. So um, if you restore a backup, you always go to that point in time and we'll be able to see how everything was at that moment when the backup was made. Now, with the parallel applications that we work with, you've got options to make different types of backups. Now, if you only have a company data backup available, there should be a parallel system also available to restore this data to enable, enable, or to enable you to extract and access the data. Uh, the system files must be obviously on the same system release version of the backup data to, for the restore to be successful and to access the data. Um, with the parallel applications, uh, re regular versions are released and each of them might contain uh, new tax tables or new features. Uh, I've been in the past three months, uh, four months, we've seen so many updates coming out just to keep up with the COVID-19 changes. And each of them contains different um, features, for example, ETI, um, 
tables that needed to be applied. And it's important that when you have a specific data backup on a specific version, that the data should be installed in the system with the same version. If you install a, a backup of data in a version lower than that, it will convert and upgrade the data, but possible recalculations might happen during a conversion. So we always say, if you've got data on a version and you need to restore it, the system where, it's be to, to where it should be restored to should be on the same version. Um, let's talk about creating a backup. And we're just going to talk about a few facts and what's in the system. Now, on the systems that you can see is when you want to make a backup, is that you will click on Utilities, select a subheading um, that says Backup, and you have your few options available. I've just given you a print screen of the two different systems, uh, Sage Classic and Premier. Seem, it looks quite the same, where Eternity looks a bit different. Now, the different options that you've seen there, just a little bit of a description on each of them, and I think some of the, the I think the options itself will actually is very explanatory. So, if you select data for this company, you will basically just um, back up the data of the current company you are accessing. You've got an option that says data for all companies, and this will back up all the companies within your payroll application, and it will also include all the system-wide files. System-wide files might be, for example, if you've got, um, you, you claim ETI, there's an ETI wage file, and the ETI wage file is um, shared between all the companies. So you've got one wage code, and all of these codes actually can be accessed from all the companies, or if, uh, if you've got a skills uh, module or equity module, the skills are module the skills plan and the equity module plans are shared between the different companies as well. And these are seen as system-wide files. And these are um, included in these backups. You get an option that says um, data files and programs. And this is only on the classic and premier program. This is a, a, a very old option where you could make the backup, which excluded the subfolders. Um, this is not a recommended option. It is still in the system. However, due to a lot of functionalities in the system that uses um, files in the advisor folder, for example, your 12-month um, history report, um, your ET report, even your equity report, there are certain templates that are saved in the advisor folder, and these and these files need to be accessed when you're running the report. So the, the data files and programs option is not a recommended option um, if you make a backups, and it's not available in Sage 200 VIP. It's been removed there. Then there are, there's an option that says data files and programs, including all subfolders. And I'm actually going to jump to the, the one at the bottom that says full system backup. Both these options are actually the full backup of your payroll folder. They do exactly the same, um, and they will include everything in the, in the folder to be backed up into a zip file. Uh, one of the new options that was uh, added was the data for selected companies, where you can actually, at the point in time when making a backup, select only a selection of a few companies you've got access to to be included in your backup. Um, so it created a bit of flexibility when making backups for the users. Now, when you make a backup, you've, you might have noticed um, in some instances that the data for this company option is grayed out, and you are not able to make a backup just for the one company that you're in. Now, this would happen only if there are there's certain modules or features used in the system. And these ones will be Premier ESS, Premier HR, Sage Self Service, Mobility, and Job Management. Now, these these applications are actually integrated applications that synchronize with other databases. For example, the Self Service is a very really good one to to refer to as we've got an ESS sync file where information is first synchronized to in the background and then it's uploaded to the to the cloud websites. Now. In order to keep all the company's data in the payroll system synchronized with, and the system-wide file synchronized with the data in the cloud, we do not allow to have a backup, an individual backup to be made of a specific company because that will, put, that will place the whole company out of sync with all your other companies and also out of sync with your, your online, uh, for example, your self-service or your Premier HR or your Premier ESS with those applications. Um, we don't want that, and to keep you safe that that doesn't happen, we are not allowing you to make a backup just of a specific company. Um, we'll get to the point where people say they want to restore only one company. There are risks involved in that, but to make the backup, that option uh, due to this will not be available within the application if, you are, if you're using one of these modules or features.
Now, where does the backup file save to? Now, it's, the system is, has brought in the option on your company miscellaneous screen um, where you are actually able to define a specific location on your computer or in your network where to save your backups to. We call it the default backup location and it will, it's available if you go to your main menu, you click on company, select miscellaneous and go to company miscellaneous 3. Um, if you go there, the option there is then to select your exports folder, your backups folder and your pastes folder, which is a default location where you can save information to. If nothing is defined, you can still go on screen uh, and go and browse for the specific directory where to save the information to. What you're seeing here currently is the Sage Classic and Sage Premier example where you save the, uh, where you're going to make a backup. So there's a from directory, which is the current location where your system resides. You've got a to directory, which is the location where you are going to save the backup to. And then the backup file name, which will appear by default by the system with a lot of information in there. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, but there's a few important requirements for the destination folder, which you select where to make the backup to. Now, a lot of people, it's quite easy to make it to directly to your C drive. Uh, the Windows uh, operating system does not allow that. And if you select your C drive, the system will allow you to, make the, to, to select it. But when the backup is made, it will fail immediately because we don't have rights to write to that to directly to your C drive. It, it must be a folder which you will have to which is available to a specific user where the user has rights to write to that folder. There's a lot of rights there. Um, the system recommends that there should be no spaces in the backup folder name. If you need to uh, split the word with, to, to have a space, rather use an underscore. Uh, as I mentioned, the user needs full permissions on the folder to write the data in the destination folder. The destination hard drive must have sufficient disk drive available to save the backup too. If there's no space, the, the, the backup will immediately fail because it can't save the data to that location. If the destination folder is in a map drive, um, the map drive must be a trusted site. Now, the app, when you access your app, apparel application, there could be network drives, but your, your profile on your user profile might not give the specific privileges or the information through to the application by making it a trusted site will allow the application to also see the location where you would like to save it to as a trusted site. We have um, added some information under the new Sage knowledge base, sagekb.com, how to make a drive a trusted site. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the process, we've done a step-by-step -step guide on our knowledge base, which can also be assist your IT guys if they're unsure to follow the process that we uh, use in our, for our applications. So that's making it easier for you in case it's not a trusted site and you are experiencing difficulties. Now, Sage 200C VIP, it's a bit different when you make a backup because there's already a specified folder where all your backups will be safe to. And that will be either if you're installed on a local computer on the local PC, in the location under your program files, or if you are, if you are, have, the, have your system installed on a network drive, it will actually save it in the similar location on the server itself. Now, when the backup is made, you cannot choose the system folder where to save it to, so there's no option to do that. The backup will run, and it will be made to the set location, which will display on screen when you make the, when you make the backup. As soon, as soon as the backup has completed, a new browser screen will pop up, and that will give you a bit of flexibility. It will tell you about what the name of the, the file is, and there will also be a log file to tell you what's included in the backup, and you will be able to either just download it to a different drive, the backup, if you don't want to keep it in the same location on the server or on the C drive of the computer where the system is installed. Uh, we, so you can download it and copy it away. And if you would like, you can also delete it from that location from the screen. So it gives you a bit of flexibility. I know there's been a lot of questions where clients on Sage 20 c wanted to save it to a specific location. Um, with the system works through the browser, and it's a bit different than the normal desktop applications, Sage Classic and Sage Premier. And due to that, with the functionalities we and the runtime used for Sage Trinity, it's, it's unfortunately not possible to, at that point, when the backup is made, to save it to a location. But we've brought in this to give you flexibility to have access to save the files and also copy it out to a different download and copy it out to a different location. I think it's quite a nice feature because you will still have your backups in a location on a server and you will also have the option to move it somewhere else. So you've got more flexibility there. 
Now, when we make a backup, um, there's a specific file name that is actually suggested by the system, which we call the default backup name. Now, each of them, if you look at it, there's a lot of scribble here, but each of them has got, it makes sense on what is in the, what the name says, what's in the in the backup. For example, if you look at the data for this company, you'll notice if it says only data, there's always just a D in front of that. If you make a data for this company backup, <coughs> my apologies, you will notice that we'll include the company number in the backup to tell us which company it is. The second part will be the period end date. This is going to be 13, I think. Uh, we've moved on a few years, but that's 2013. And we'll also give the computer time when the backup was uh, made. So on the computer where the backup was made, it will give the computer time there, as well as the release number that's automatic there. In the, old, in the older days, we didn't have that in there, but from a few releases back, we've included the system and the release number in the backup name. It just makes it so much easier when you look at the file name to know what the version is of that file. If you're doing a data for all companies, we include the word all. When you do it for selected companies, unfortunately, we can't put in the numbers of the specific companies in there, so it will just have the word D cell for selected companies. Um, but if you make a full system backup, we make a data files and programs for all, including all subfolders, the word full will be there. And if it's a data files and programs, the ones I won't recommend, it's a DFP that I will say there. Um, we always say retain the name. If you'd like to put something uh, to add to it, for example, a company name or person name or anything, you can add to it, but uh, if possible, do not remove the details because it just makes it so much easier for yourself and if a support person needs to assist you to be able to identify the, the details of the specific backup, saving you time. All right, um, a full system backup. Now, that's the one that you do to to back up the whole payroll system. And this is always one of the steps that's included when you need to um, upload a new um, a new release version of the system. I know that, we've, as I mentioned, we had a few there. And every time before you do an update, it's required to make a full system backup. Now, the reason for the full system backup is, is to give you a restore point in case something goes wrong. So you've got your snapshot just before you update the release. And unfortunately, in events, anything can happen on a computer. We've seen so many times um, networks go down, congestion, pe um, uh, people interrupting the process by closing certain applications while the process is running. So anything can happen. Now, when you, when you run the update installer, you actually have the option to create a full system backup at that point in time. So this actually takes uh, takes away the process of first making the, the, the full system backup in your application by, by asking everybody to go out and then loading the, the update installer. You can actually arrange your downtime with your users to say, well, this is going to be my update time. They, they don't need to make a backup, but what's going to happen is that during the installation, there's an option that says make full system backup. When you run that backup, or we'll make that selection. When the update installer continues, it will first create the backup. In other words, it will make a zip file, but it saves it into a folder, a backups folder within your application, um, within your application folder. So that's the one drawback of using this option. It saves it in the in in the system folder, thus making your parallel application folder actually a bit bigger than it's supposed to be. The good news is when you make a full system backup, it always excludes the backups folder. So it will not include the backup of a backup. So that's good news to know. But the backup, the, the backup before the update will be saved in that backups folder. Now, in the case where you run your update installer and anything goes wrong, the system installer will warn you and to say that something went wrong. Would you like to revert back to your, your backup made? And yes, the system will then automatically be reverted back to the previous release. We will be able to access the system if necessary, but you will be able to revert back to, back to that point in time just before the update was made. So having downtime for, for your update installers is always a good thing because you have set aside time where your users can't access the system. And this uh, option just gives you flexibility, especially when uh, you've got a specific person responsible for updates to be able to to, to run the installer for you as well as create a, to create a backup because sometimes a full system backup subject to the to the volume of data in there could take, can take some time. 
And this is now part of your downtime to, to load your update installer. Let's talk about, about restoring backups. Because now you've made your backup and you want to bring some data back. Now, a lot of people are even not aware that there are actually options within the system application to restore data. Most people revert back just to go to the folder to double click on it and just extract the data to the folder. But we actually have an option within the system where we can restore data um, to, to your payroll company folders. So in Sage Classic and Premier and Tennessee, you've got an option under backups that says restore and you can restore data for this company and data for all all data for all file but all data files you can do that you'll notice that two of these options aren't available in Trinity which is the all files on backup and all files on backup including subfolders I would just like to mention if you use this option here to restore a company or all companies it actually writes information to your log file and that that is actually a benefit to you to have a record that data was replaced at some point in time and reverted back to a specific file um, it's important for you for, for in case you have to do an investigation to, to notice if people are actually doing something that they're not supposed to. I, we just really want to look at the different restore options. So the data for, for this company, what will happen if you select that option? It will basically go into the backup you select and it will only copy the data files for the specific company. Now I know a lot of people have asked the questions. If I've I've, I've made a backup for all companies. If I use this option, will it replace all my companies? No, this option, with this, what's great of this option, it will only restore the data for the specific company you're in. So if you're standing in company one and you've got a data for all companies, it will only restore data for the specific company. If you select the all data files, what will happen? It will take all the data files of all companies within the backup file and it will extract it and replace all the existing companies that's in there. So you've got an option to replace the one company or all companies. There's unfortunately not a selected company restore. Then the two options you saw with Classic and Premier, which is all files on backup and all files on backup, including subfolders. These are actually where you want to restore a full system backup. If you use these options, you'll notice that you'll get an error message that the full system backup may not be restored into the current directory. It's just that you're actually currently accessing some of the files while you're busy in the program. And unfortunately, when you're going to restore data, it's going to fail because not all the files will be able to be replaced. Um, so it's actually, these two options are obsolete at the moment. If you think about it, that when you want to restore a full system backup, you can't use this. Um, and that's why it's not even included in Sage 200 c at all. Now, when you restore a data backup, it's important to ensure that the data is always on the same release version before you extract the data. You don't want to surprise when you've extracted data where a weird error message will pop up that mentions that it needs to be on a specific version before it can be on this, the current version. And that usually comes up when you've got a restored and very old backup of a version which is not compatible with the current system into the folder. So it's important to always restore it into the same release. We always say it must be the same. Don't do it in one that's higher because it's going to do a conversion and we're not sure if the conversion might do a possible recalculation of data. That type of information is always contained in the release notes of an update. So when you select to extract a, or extract a backup for restore, that you must just remember that all data will be overwritten and replaced, and there's also a message that will pop up and telling you that the files will be rest that restored will be overwritten. So it's just important to know that. So a full system backup cannot be restored through the payroll options and should be restored through File Explorer. So if you say File Explorer, it might actually mean, mean that you can go through um, when RAR, WinZip, 7-Zip, any of these applications, you can go and actually extract the information from the full system backup. When you do a full system backup restore, it physically overrides the full the, the whole system and puts them back in the snapshot uh, in that of that time frame of when the backup was originally made, the full system backup. Um, unfortunately, it also replaces the log file when you when you extract a a uh, full system backup, so you will re lose all information that was logged if you replace a full system backup. So um, I don't think it's always the best idea to, to just restore a full system backup into your live directory, 
with preferably just restore specific data of companies and keep um, using the, the functions that we've mentioned here to ensure there's always a, a, a information written to your log file. And the only time where we would say to, if you need to restore one company, for example, where you can use File Explorer, if, if there's an issue that you are unable to access the company through the normal process and you've tried everything to make the company work. In some instances, we've seen that data can become corrupted on your company. For example, um, there was a, a with load shedding happening, it could have been that your user were busy, was busy at, at, with some process and due to that, the search that happened, the trajectory search, it could have caused damage to the data itself. Usually a rebuild of the data, the view tool as I call it, should resolve the issue, but in some instances, due to that instance, some data is lost and you will not, and you might not be able to recover everything. In that case, we need to restore the data for the specific company. And unfortunately, if the options to restore them through the system is not available, it needs to be done outside the system. So that's the only time that we would recommend that. Um, now, if you use File Explorer, uh, we've just given you the steps. I think most people are familiar with extracting a zip file, but one of the important points is always that ensure that nobody's accessing the payroll system and the folder. So you shouldn't have anybody working in a Word document or Excel document in that subfolder because it might be included in a zip file, and we don't want this, the, the extraction process to be stopped at any point in time. So you access in File Explorer, you, you must always make sure that the backup you're going to restore is on the same release as we mentioned. You can just right click on it and select Extract All on the file. It will prompt you to say, do you want it to be overwritten? And you can say yes. And you can just browse into the destination folder where the data should be extracted. The, the process will continue and all the files will be replaced in that folder with the data backup and the test will always be you open up the system to make sure that everything is as expected. If, you, if you're, rest, you're restoring something from last two weeks ago and you restore the backup, you, the expectation is if you open the system, it will be two weeks ago. Now, the question is, when should I restore backup to my live, live payroll? Now we would say payroll should be should only be restored to your live payroll. So in other words, your live system. If you want to restore something, only restore it to your live system. If your intention is to override the existing payroll data and return to the point in time when the backup was made with the intention of reprocessing processing to the current pay period. So your intention is you would definitely want to go back to that point in time and you will start reprocessing. It's not a case that I just want to view something. I physically want to go back to a point in time. The other option or the other reason why you will restore data to your live system is that the system or the company data it has been damaged or corrupted and you are unable to access it and unable to fix it with a re uh, rebuild functionality. And in this case, the only, the only option that will be available for you is to restore the data of the company. That's when, at that, that point, uh, we will definitely, that's the, definitely one of the cases where you can actually restore it to the live payroll. As we say, take note, when you replace live payroll data, it must be on the same version as the live payroll application. And if you restore a full system backup, all the files will be replaced. So it's just something that we keep repeating for people to remember that the, the information will be overwritten. So what happens? I would like to see some information in the backup, but I don't want to put it into my, into my live system. What can I do? So if you need to restore company data, for example, to print reports that you've got to print and you didn't keep your PDFs maybe, uh, for previous periods or do an export for some reason. I know a lot of people have try, trying to do UF submits with the COVID-19 TERS applications and for some reason um, some, some employers actually have, have never done the UF submit before which is one of the requirements, one of the requirements. we've seen that happen. Um, now they want to redo those um, files again and send it to the Department of Labor. What they can do is to restore the payroll data but to restore it to a copy system. So in other words they actually create a a copy of the current payroll, and if the data is in the same version, yes, they can restore it to that. If they make a copy system, they can access it just like a normal system as well. So it's giving them the, the, the flexibility to be, to be able to access the data, print the reports, do the exports, everything, and in the end, it's not affecting your live payroll system at all. We are saying this because we don't want your live payroll to be 
uh, compromised. In a case where you've got multiple users working in different companies um, on your payroll, you're sharing it over network, what will happen if one of your users decide to restore a backup? And it's maybe a data backup for all companies. Everybody will lose the information that they've been working on for the past, say, in a week or two, because if, they, if there was no backup made before restoring the data, there's no way of recovering that unless you've got specific other processes of recovering data, which we'll talk about a bit later. So it's, it's, a, it's a risk for you to extract the information into your live system if it's not necessary to do so. So always try not to restore data to your live system if you don't have to. Only restore that if it's the need is there, something is broken or you, the intention is to go back. But the live payroll should not be there. And we've seen people having a lot of fights if somebody goes and restores data that they, they didn't even know. They didn't know what was contained in the backup. They think they're restoring one company. And then what happens? They're restoring all companies. Everybody loses everything. And you can think of the type of conversations that can happen after such a situation. It's not. It's not positive ones, and, and that's not the type of conversation that we will have, like to have with our clients as well. We would like to make sure that everything is going fine on their side. So if you only have a data backup available uh, for, to, to restore, just make sure that you, and, this, and it's maybe on a different version that you, that you don't currently have, just look for your full system backup right before your um, upgrade was done to, to the current version. It should be labeled with full. And you'll be able to restore that and to create a shortcut. The shortcut will then be able to access it, and you'll be able to restore the data to the copy system there as well, from which is the full system back backup that was restored. So uh, there are different ways. I think it's just important for us to say, do not restore anything to your live system if you do not have to restore it there. Just keep your data safe. Um, we spoke about some of the integrated programs, Premier ESS, Sage Soft Service, and Premier HR. Now, what ha the, the backups that are made, you cannot um, you cannot make a data backup just for one company. You can only do it for all companies. But in a case that it can happen that you are required to restore only one company for for specific reasons, there might be reasons behind it to to recover it. Maybe there's damage to that company. Now, the, the risk involved in this is when you restore only one company, is that there are certain files which are system-wide files which talk to the to the different applications to tell the exactly for the other application to know exactly where the employee is and then which company in the system folder. As soon as you restore a backup, the employee might not uh, might not have existed in the backup and should still be created again. And then it means that he's not in the, the payroll data, but it's, for example, in the ESS data or the self-service data. And this is causing an inconsistency because of the non-synchronization. Now, if we restore a backup of one company, there's a certain few steps that need to be followed. If you need to do so, always get in contact with the support team. There's a few questions they will ask you just to determine what will be the right requirement and what can be done. Are there certain things that our the technical team needs to assist with, especially with the, 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 the identifiers between the two systems uh, which need to be synchronized? It's not as easy as it sometimes seems because uh, certain things are created and because the data is secure, it's not an, just a push of a button to fix certain things. There are certain uh, linking, linkages that need to be done. So if it's a case that you're running, for example, Premier SS, Premier HR or Safe Self Service, and you're required to to restore a data backup for one company, please get in contact with the support team for them to assist you with that. Take note, if you restore a backup as well, um, certain transactions might have already been, and claims might have already been posted to these to the different applications. And by restoring a backup, you're actually erasing all those transactions that have already been posted. So your self-service might, might already think it has been posted and it's ticked it off, but your payroll system doesn't even know about it because of the backup restore. Um, the Premier ESS application has a certain feature to repost leave applications, but claims and family 
changes and personal changes, unfortunately, cannot be reposted and it mainly needs to be changed. Premier HR allows synchronization between the applications. You can synchronize from your payroll to HR or HR to payroll. So there are certain discussions that can happen there to make it life easier. And Sagesign self-service itself, unfortunately, does not have a repost um, option as well. Does anything that has been already posted and approved, unfortunately, will be manually have to be updated again and then synchronized. So it's not the, the most favorable favorable thing to restore data if you are integrated user of one of the other applications. Right, let's just talk about a few responsibility and recommendations from Sage regarding backups. So the payroll application provides you with the means to create the data and program file backups. However, the backups must be safely stored and safeguarded, but it also must be easily accessible if it's needed for certain specific reasons. The backups can, can be made to selected locations through the application, and it could include, for example, local folders on the local computer or external hard drives. The contents of the backup location containing the data should be synchronized to be securely transferred to off-site service and cloud storage on a daily basis. So basically what we're saying is if you've made your backups and you've made it to a specific drive on your servers, these server locations should also be saved to a different location and it must be off-site or in a cloud. Re the reason why is you might be working in one, one, comp one business and one premises and unfortunately if theft, fire, that type of thing happens and they're taking your computers with, they're going to take your backups with it as well. So it's important to have those data backups transferred off-site or to the cloud. If this is to the cloud to copy the information there after it has been done. One of, the, one of the things that we know that some clients have been doing is that they actually use a, a feature which synchronizes the, the actual payroll folder with another location. So files, I think it's called file syncing or file and folder syncing. Now this is a, it's for the payroll application, as it's a database working with flat files, the, the system requires the, the files always to be exclusively uh, open and accessible to be able to write data and save data to the files. Now, if this active or real-time file syncing is uh, is actually on the go, what happens is is that while we are writing information to the file, for example, we are changing a employee's ID number. The system in the background opens the file and starts writing to that uh, to that file. But now the syncing program says, oh, there's something changing. It starts copying that file to the different location. What it does is actually now also locking the file and copying the file. Now we can't actually save the information that we've just written to the file. And this happens in milliseconds. Unfortunately, we won't even notice that it's happening. But if that happens, then the system cannot save the information there and it can in the end result to data errors or even possible corruption if it's holding on to certain files when we need to write information too. So we are always saying is don't real-time synchronize your files. Rather have a case that all, work, all users work on the payroll system between 8 and 7 or 8 and 5. I'm not sure what your payroll, some people say 8 to 8 or 8, 24 7, or hopefully not. But if you, if there's certain working hours they can work on it, always make sure that if you synchronize folders to be saved to other location, that it's only done after hours when no other user is accessing the system. It's just there that there should be no other users locking these files. Now, one of the, 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 in, the in the older day, people were making backups to stiffy drives. Then there was the, the, the revolution of the CD drives and then CD writers and then after flash drives came to place, external hard drives. Uh, we just wanted to mention, uh, I know that a lot of people still use flash drives to make their backups to. <clears throat> now what happens if you put in a, 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 a flash drive into the, into the USB port and you select the backup to be made there, the system will firstly format the USB and then it will save the current folder. I've seen in cases where users might always think they're saving, the, they're adding a backup to that flash drive. Unfortunately, it will erase the previous information and it doesn't have that one there. It's just because it recognizes it as, a, as removable the drives, like we had in the old days of the floppy and the stiffy drives. Uh, just to, to clear it out, it always formatted the disk and a, a flash drive seems to be still flagged as removable disk and the format 
process is still built into the system. Just be careful of that. We always recommend it, if you want to make a backup and save it to a USB to keep safe, maybe to put in your 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 handbag that's in the that could be safe in your boot or something like that. But if you want to save it to that, first save it to a location on your hard drive and then copy it over to the flash drive if if you'd like to have use that process um for, for 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 saving your backup. So don't do it just directly to the removable disk. You might be surprised. Um, period end backups, that's your monthly, bi-weekly, and weekly backups. Should also be made after the payroll processing has been completed and salary wages have been transmitted. Your final backup for the period. These backups should also be securely stored and saved as per your company policy and should be labeled as the final backup for the pay period. It's just that you know if you need to go back to it, that was the last one and will contain all uh, stop for the entry was, for example, the, all the pay subs are printed there for, for record keeping. All the information there is as is what appeared on the employee's pay slips and your reports. Just make sure you always label that correctly. Um, I know some people like making regular backups, but then they're not sure which one is the right one. So just make sure you label that uh, as the final backup for that pay period. Now, in a case where you have a final pay period backup, you restored it, and you've made changes, which is maybe necessary because something happened, for example, it was a late termination, which is supposed to have been dealt with, and you actually go and you make these changes, just make sure that you create a new backup again. We've seen in cases where people restore backups, make the changes, and they roll forward without making a backup. Now, unfortunately, if they want to go, if they made a mistake and they want to go back, they have to restore the original backup and redo everything again and it might be wasting some time because it could be a lot of things to be to be done. Just make sure always to create a final backup after you've made changes to your previous final backup. Um, then when you when you do a start of period, one of the questions asked is, have you made a backup? There's a little tick box there. Now uh, we've re we've noticed that some people think if they tick the box, actually the the backup is being made. Um, unfortunately, it's only a confirmation where you as a user say, yes, I've made my backup. It will not automatically make a backup. Um, the, the cloud product that we have on the same stack, a product stack, which is called Sage Business Cloud Payroll Professional, um, they've made changes in that product where it actually, before you do a startup period, it uh, does actually automatically do a backup. Uh, for, for the system and saves it. But unfortunately, with Classic, Premier, and Trinity, this does not happen. Um, but what we can recommend is that the system has got a feature which is called the period end checklist. You can just build it in on your checklist because the checklist should be completed before you do your start of period. And there's also a confirmation where you can actually build in a question, Have I, I, I have done a final backup for the period where the user must say yes or no. If you build it in there, they can't continue without doing that and that will also force them to go and do the backup. So create it there, but always make sure that the users do make a backup and also go check if they made a backup to a specific folder, make sure the backup is in that specific folder. Unfortunately, computers could be are temperamental sometimes. The system will make, definitely make a backup because we, a, op, a, a screen message will reply and says backup successful. If that's there, the computer has told the application that the backup is so stored safely in the location, but anything can happen where somebody goes and deletes the file and you don't even know about that. Yeah. Um, naming of backups are very important. As the default backup name is the name, the way to go to keep that because it includes the, the program version. Um, you can add more detail to the backup name, but we would recommend to not change the, to remove any of the details of the default name. Now, if you if you're using a if you have a multi-user environment or run on servers, it's always good on your 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 strategy and policy for your business for safeguarding your data is to that it should always include all the folders of the parallel application when it actually copies it over to be stored on the other servers. And if it's a case that you would like these folders to be copied to a different location, it should be after hours when nobody's accessing the system. It's just because of the locking of files. You don't want the system to synchronize it at, at any time. Only do after hours backups of your servers where it's then stored to offsite locations. Now, they always say that f according to the the, the 
Administration Act, they say that data should be kept for five years, and if you are um, audited by the receiver of revenue in South Africa, for example, for 10 years, we always say, if they say keep it for five years, keep it for longer, <laughs> because anything can happen. Uh, unfortunately, it is a case of yeah, you require more disk space to save these files to, but I think it is important to know that if they say it's restored it for five years, rather store it for 10 years. Just to keep, just in case you need the information. Now, full system backups, even though they are very large in file size, is recommended, as this included the data and the programs, and it also makes it easier to access and review the data. So, even though data for this company backups are easy and convenient, it's also quite convenient to actually have full system backups. Luckily, this space has become a bit more cheaper the past few years. Hard drives were quite expensive, uh, but we, we, we're using terabytes of information currently, and the price of it has become cheaper. It's better to keep it. I would recommend, to, if it's possible, to have a full system backup for your system month in to keep that one. It's just easier for your people to, to, to use that and access the information there. All right. Just some troubleshooting. Oops. Just some troubleshooting, which we would like to discuss. Uh, I think this is one of the, the, the worst messages to get when you're making a backup, which is backup failed. Nobody likes something that fails, but unfortunately, if the message backup failed happens, there is something that is interfering with the backup process. Now, in the back end, the system, all it does is actually um, goes, takes the information, all the files necessary, which is included by the option that's selected, it takes that information, uh, it writes it into a compressed zip file, so it makes it a bit smaller, and it just saves the data. So it's basically a process of copying the data, squashing it a bit, and putting it somewhere <laughs> in layman's terms. But there are a few things to be able to do that. There's a few things that can unfortunately affect it. And if we're looking at the backup file error message that might pop up, it could happen um, that, you, that you select to continue with the backup, and the, the, the message will pop up immediately, so it doesn't even look like anything has happened, it didn't run, or the backup can run. You'll see the, the black screen, uh, the DOS screen as I call it, uh, pops up and it will show you the progress of the files being backed up, and then only at the end it tells you backup failed without explaining what could be the problem. Now, if we're looking at a backup file where it happens immediately, it definitely tells me that there's something envir environmentally wrong, uh, not to say it's your environment, but in the environment where the system runs, there's something wrong and it can't run as normal. So there's a technical, it could be a technical issue that's causing the system not to do the backup. If it's if it's this backup file since after running a while, it's something in the data which is contained in the backup. So it, it's what it's telling me is that either a file is in use, which I'm trying to backup and I can't do it, or I cannot access a specific file. So there's a, there's a differentiation where we always would look at if, if, if a backup space failed, it can either happen immediately, then we know it's environmental, and if it happens after a while, it's something in the data that we're backing up. Now let's quickly look at when a backup fails immediately. What's the things that we would always recommend to look at? Um, firstly, we'll make sure that if you made a backup, you did not select the C drive. Unfortunately, it's, it might sound like something strange that people do, but yes, people do it because it's an easy place to find something. Now, unfortunately, the operating system does not allow it because we cannot write to it. It will stop. It will tell us to stop our process immediately, and that's why the backup is failing. One of the, the interesting things that we've picked up um, a few times is that the, the file, it's actually the program that uh, the application uses called pkzipc.exe, executable file. Now, execu executable files run all the time because it does a few functions, even running the application or opening the application, it, it requires a file called wrun32.exe, an executable file. And now, because it executes, it does few, uh, it runs the application, unfortunately, there are some programs which there's malware and viruses which attack, attaches to programs. You could have gone and you've clicked on a link and this, the, 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 the program starts running, the virus starts running in the background. Now, every program that you, write, what you are using on your computer, the virus attaches to that. Now, when your system does a, an after-hours 
a virus check for you, it might pick up, oh, I can see there's a virus attached to this executable file. And what does it do then? It actually links, it takes it to quarantine. So it actually removes the file from your folder and puts it into quarantine. You might not even notice it and until the day that you actually want to make a backup. So one of the things is that if the file is not there, your backup will fail immediately because the program can't run in the background. So one of the things that we always will check if if we get the backup file immediately is to go and check is the file called pkzipc.exe in the folder. If it's not there, you can try to recover it from your quarantine, but the easiest part would be is to actually just ask the support team to send you a new copy of the file. What we'll um, recommend is just to mention to them what's the current version. How lucky if you're going to request it via web form, one of the questions will be what, what's the current version of your payroll. It's just for them to ensure that they provide you with the, the correct file version. It hasn't changed for I'm not sure how long, so most of them are compatible. It's just for records that we know what version you're on when you're getting this. If you and if you find the file in the quarantine, I would recommend that you do a thorough sweep and clean up of your computers uh, to to your network as well, because unfortunately, we've seen ransomware uh, attacking our users uh, where they open files and people hijack their data. It happens. It sounds like something you'll see in a CSI or a one of these stories on the television, and unfortunately, it does happen out there. So if you've noticed something like this happens, just make sure that you uh, run the necessary cleanups with your, your data. And if your, your, your payroll applications are, um, are affected, the good news is the data would not be affected, the data programs, but the application files might be affected. And then a clean installation is what will be necessary to, to resolve these issues. Yeah. Now, also, if you make a backup and you're saving it to a specific location or you select a file location, I think I mentioned it a bit earlier, is that you have to have permissions to write uh, to a specific folder. So you actually need full control because you need to be able to read, to edit, and to write uh, files into the backups folder. So if, it, if you don't have it, it will fail immediately because you can't write to that folder. So just make sure the user profile that you're using to to, to do the backup has been defined correctly. Uh, the permissions have been defined correctly. Um, one of the things that we've also noticed happening is that you are trying to make a backup to a network drive. Now, when you look at your, your two folder, we, the destination folder, we would like to make a back, the backup to, it will actually not look like your map drive, your, your network drive, because you might have a V drive or S drive or X drive. And if you look at your location, it might, says, it might say slash slash uh, server slash payroll or something like that, but it, it will not start the drive letter. And this unfortunately will cause the, 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 the application PKZIPS not to understand the location because that will be the UNC location, as they call it, uh, and not the drive letter which is used in making backups. Now, this is caused when the map drive is not a trusted site. Now, in order to fix that up, is that we make it a trusted site, and after we've done made it a trusted site, it should resolve the issue. We have seen in some instances, unfortunately, even after making a trusted site, the, the, there's still residual memory of um, in, in the applications where it actually does not recognize the, the, the map drive anymore. And in such instances, unfortunately, it happens that the, the map drive must be disconnected and reconnected, and new um, shortcuts need to be created for the application as well. And this is just to remove that residual memory of how things were and to create fresh memories for, for the application to know where it is and of the map drive. Um, if you need assistance with these type of things, we have information on Sage KB, how to make a how to make a map drive a trusted site. We've got uh, some information there and we're also creating some New video content to help with that as well. That should be up uh, soon. We will make it easier for you to, for you to, to, to give it through to your IT guys if you're unable to, to attend to, this, to the process yourself. But that will definitely resolve one of the issues which pop up, pops up a lot we've seen with users on network drives. One of the other options is <laughs> which people think is quite strange is that the destination drive is full. Um, it might happen that you're putting it to external drive and unfortunately, Data grows and grows. We never know until it's too late that your the drive is full. You don't sometimes even see the warning on your on your um, Windows Explorer information is there. So it could 
be that if the drive is full and nothing can be written, you'll get a message immediately. If it was a case that your drive was not full full, but while we're writing the data, it becomes full. For example, there was 500 megs available. Your backup is going to be 800 megabytes. What will happen is it will create a file up to the 500 megabytes, but then it can't, it can't write information there. In that case, the, the, the message will not pop up immediately. It will only pop up in the end. So, so always make sure before making backups there is enough space on your disk drives. Now, if a backup previously failed, we always say use a different name as well. Because if a backup failed, it could be that the file is still left there with the specific file name. If you're trying to make a backup again to the with the same file name, it will recognize there's a failed backup in the folder, and it might cause other other errors and problems as well, and other questions. So always use a unique name when making a backup. Yeah. So so I think in a nutshell, this this will assist with where the backup fails immediately. Um, these are not the majority of the type of queries we get, but it, it shows you that some things can be wrong before we make a backup, and that can be dealt with to to resolve those issues. Now, the, the one that's a bit tougher sometimes to resolve is after the, if the backup files are after running a while. Now, one of the first reasons why it could be is that you're making a backup and you've asked all your users to go out of the system or and they did not. Or it could be a case where you've opened two instances of the same company and you forgot about one. It actually happens as well. So. Nobody, no other user should be in the company data when making a backup because we need exclusive writing and reading of the information. So always make sure that there's no other users in the system. If you're using global access, which is with Sage Premier uh, available, you will actually be able to see which users are actually uh, still logged in and you'll be able to kick them out. Uh, from the system. So that's always quite nice to use, but you don't want them to be logged into the system. Now, if you get if you make a full system backup and you're also getting this message, you've asked everybody to go out and everybody is out, and you make a full system backup, and you still get the message after a while that says um, backup failed, it could be that your users might be still accessing certain files which has been saved in your, your system folder. Now, we always recommend that you all your export files should be done in a, into a folder outside of your parallel application. Your backup should also be made to a different location. Um, your payslips as well, but it could be that somebody is accessing a file, for example, a Word or an Excel document. If you're running, for example, the employment equity report, the original files or uh, the templates reside in your payroll folder. So if you're still accessing that files, you didn't close them or save them, what will happen is, is that that files will still be in use. So because the files are in use and not closed, unfortunately, the backup cannot be made of those files because they are included in the full system backup and will cause the, the message to happen. So all users should be out of the system and any files that uh, that's open that could be linked to your parallel folder should be closed by these users. Now, one of the easy ways to actually get people to to, to, or to, to, to close these Files is to if it's, if your system is installed on a local computer, it's quite easy. You just restart your PC. When it comes to a case where you've got multiple users and it's a network environment, unfortunately, it's not as easy because you then have to uh, restart your server uh, because that will close any active runtime or any active files. It will close them down. And we understand that in some instances, your your server is not just a payroll server. Your server is actually running your uh, your your Sage accounting, hopefully Sage accounting applications, uh, like your evolution for your stock control, that type of thing, and it's on the same server. Uh, we always say it's possible to to have multiple servers or even the virtual servers to 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 have these applications separate from each other when you have to do a restart because you don't want to stop the other applications as well when you need to do something like this. One of the one of the more recent issues that we've noticed is that there's a file which is called ESS Sync. Now, this specific file is used for um, mobility payslips. This is where you can actually, when you print your payslips, you can actually send it up to a cloud um, cloud website, which the employees will be able to access it via the cloud website, their payslips, or they can actually access this via a, a, a phone app, a smartphone application. Um, 
mobility is a free uh, free um, feature of the system where you move it. Site soft service is uh, the bigger version of that because it allows workflows and leaf management as well. But mobility is more just for the payslip management. Now what happens is that these files are actually read at certain times when the information is uploaded to, to these websites. So every frequent, um, I think it's about four hours, the system goes and it goes and reads the information, it pushes it up to the to the website. Now if you notice in, in multi-user environments, these, synchro these um, synchronizations aren't synchronized between the multiple users. And what happens is while you're busy to make the backup, one of the users, um, connected services is trying to synchronize with the self-service site, pushing up some information. And unfortunately, the files in use, and that stops the full, just the backup to be, to, to fail. So the, the, one of the options is just to make sure that there's no communication on Sage connected services at that time. And unfortunately, it, it should not be just stopped on the one computer. It should be stopped on all the users. So it, it creates a bit of a frustration um, for, for the users. If you've got mobility, there is a workaround that we can provide for you to, to actually change the location um, that the files aren't read within the directory. The only issue we have is with Sage Self Service, which they are currently investigating uh, from the product delivery team to resolve this issue uh, for, 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 for the users. Now, the full system backup, if you're making a full system backup for an update, you can, if you use the update option in the installer, the update installers, um, Backup actually ignores the ESS sync file, so that backup will not fail to make it easier for you. But uh, at the moment, if you do have issues with the ESS sync file, maybe locking, um, there are some certain ways that we can assist you. And if you struggle with the backup that's failing, uh, our support teams are there to assist, to, assist, to, uh, to help you to find the, the reason for that. Um, what we do is we, we work through the list as well. Our Sage KB will be updated uh, quite soon with a nice um, decision tree as well, helping you to, to identify and resolving issues without staying on the line or waiting for somebody to assist you. There's always ways that we can go and help you to, to, to diagnose what the problem could be. But basically, this is the type of things that will cause your backup to fail. And yeah, it's, it, it unfortunately does happen out there. Well, I've come to the end of the presentation part. Um, I'd just like to mention that if you have not joined, uh, if you're not aware of these three options that Sage offer, Sage University is where we offer all our training for our products. We have our mid-year, um, for South Africa, the mid-year submissions coming up now from September to October. We are offering a nice um, um, webinars and training on this as well. Uh, please be sure to join, join, go to Sage University and have a view of what we're offering there for you and, for your, employ and your employees. Uh, Sage Knowledge Base was launched now in May for our product stack, and it's, we've had some great results. It actually the search fun function is amazing, where you can put in a few a few words, and you will actually be able to find this, the, the the content and articles to give the solutions to you. If you haven't tried Sage Knowledge Bases yet, it's www.sagekb.com. Um, you, you, what you can do is put in a few words. You can filter there and you, on your specific product, and it will bring up the most frequently used and successful solutions that assist our clients if they do have specific uh, needs, how to how to use certain features, or if they get an error message, how to resolve an error message. Um, we like to make it as easy as possible for you as a user not to 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 rely on other people to assist you, to have the content available for you to make it easier. It's so much easier to just go and look for an error message and get the answer than to wait for somebody on the telephone line to talk to them, which will be possibly be reading the same information as you do to resolve the issue. So Sage Knowledge Space, definitely the place to go. Um, it gives you an option to vote for um, the solutions as well. Please vote for them. Um, if, if they don't work for you, please leave a comment and say why they didn't work for you because we're always evolving with the solutions that we're providing there for you. And Sage City, it's been there a while. It's been a success story for Sage um, because we, we are creating a platform for users to talk to each other. It's a place where you can 
um, reach out to other experts. If you've got a problem or questions or just want to share information, you can go there and discuss it with other users. Um, we've got business partners um, on there as well, um, people that work in the environment which might be able to give you advice on certain things, how to do it. We've seen with the, the TERS report, um, with the frustrations that users had just to just to, to complete and upload information, uh, the uncertainty of uh, we've seen how many how people talk to each other. Um, some people you could, you could hear that they, it was really frustrating for them, but then somebody came in and said, no, it will work, and it actually you can see the community is talking to each other. So you're not alone out there. I know that some people we we're, we're not all working from the offices. We're working from um, some some from home. But this is also a place where the community can get together. And even our sage colleagues they're also posting information there. If you need something new to, that need about need to know about something new, for example, when the update is out, we're going to push information there. If SARS says something that's changed, we're going to put the information there for you. Um, so Sage City, it's just www.sagecity.com. Um, just go to the support groups, look for Africa and, and Middle East, and that will be at the top, and then you can select our product stack um, to be able to start asking questions. You just need to get a stage ID for that. So that's our offering that we've got there. Um, I'm just going to quickly have a look here. I see there's a few questions that's been asked. Uh, let me just quickly see if I can answer them, if they have not been answered by my colleague already. Yes, the, there was a question about the, the 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 recording. Yes, we will upload it. It should be done in after after we've actually just completed the recording and saved everything. It will be made available. Will also be if you when you've registered, you've provided us the email address. We'll just send you a mail to confirm where it is and where to access the information as well. The question there from Corin is: Can you delete files before doing a backup to reduce the size? Definitely, files can be deleted. Just be careful what you delete there. Uh, I see Sean has answered. Files can be removed, but there's always a risk that the system files can be removed by accident. Uh, recommended to remove the zip files from the live barrel folder and move to another folder. And the zip files can be backups that need to, that you need to have in the future as well. So don't just delete everything. Rather, move the information out there, or the files out there. Um, if you don't recognize the files, um, be, <laughs> be careful of that, I think. But usually the zip files could be backups made there. Um, but if you're unsure what to remove, you can just contact our support teams, which can give you some advice on what is what is in the system, what's not in the system. You can also book an online consultation where the consultants will be going through the information and making sure that if there's something that they need to remove, they can give you advice on that as well. Um, we've got certain files. Um, they talk about the pay and the VIX files when it comes to the application, which is the data files. And if your, your, your pay file becomes greater than two gigabytes, it actually creates a different extension, a DO1 extension. And if that's if you delete that file, you're going to get corruption in so, certain programs. So then just remove what you've got there. Yeah, so I see Corin's IT division always ask about it to reduce the size. So we definitely can assist them. Um, I think they must just get in touch, and we can give you a nice assistance there, Corin. Oh, I thought, thank you. We've got your email there, but we'll definitely get you as soon as it's there, and we'll give the information through uh, to you as soon as the recording is available and some additional information we'd like to share with you. But we've done a lot of articles and information about the backups, a lot of videos. So what we will do is on the recording, we'll give you a comprehensive pack with information related to, to the backups and restoring of information. We'd like to give that to you as a, a perk there. Um, but it is available on the knowledge base. We're just putting it there together for you. And yeah. Um, we're excited that our clients have been here for, for this and that that you're using our systems. That's always good to know that the system is working for you and that you're able to, 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 to love Sage and love the products. Thanks. Um, if there's any other questions to post, feel free to ask, put it in the Q&A. Um, we should still be here. We've booked out the session until half past, so um, half past 11. So at this point in time, uh, we, we can conclude the, 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 the presentation of the webinar, but we will keep it open just if there are specific questions you'd like to ask here. And we'd like to thank you, and thank you for using SAGE.